Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm going to show you how to make s'mores, but we're going to talk about vertebrae instead in the meantime. So I make deluxe s'mores, and I find these really good waffle cone things work better than graham crackers, or at least they taste better than graham crackers. And I get for my chocolate some really good chocolate. I also have done co coffee filled chocolate, that's good too. And because it was just Easter and these were on sale, this is my marshmallow. I'm going to use a peep. So, first you skewer the peep or your marshmallow and start to think of this as the disc in between your vertebrae. Think of the two waffle cone things, graham crackers, as the, the vertebrae that are on top of and below every single disc. And Think of this as the nucleus propulsus. If I could get this inside the marshmallow, that would be even better, but that's not possible. They haven't started making marshmallows with chocolate inside them yet. When they do, this example will be perfect. But until then, you just have to use your imagination that this chocolate should be inside this marshmallow, and that's the nucleus propulsus in the center of the disc. Okay, so this is my candle, my campfire, and I'm gonna start roasting my peep. So the outside, um, edges of the peep. It's going to be like the annular fibers of the, the disc and it's just getting weak, weakened over time from wear and tear and strain or maybe little bursts of injury. Um, so it's not like I'm actu you actually burn your disc in real life. Just think of this as the aging process and a lot of different types of stresses placed on it. So it gets a little weaker um, it doesn't hold the goo inside as well, and under certain strain, it may, you know, burst out. Just like when you, oh, see that's the way to cook a s'more, is to catch it on fire. Alright, we gotta let this simmer for a while. This is the fast way to cook your s'mores. Let them burn. I call that disc inflammation. Good thing we don't have fire detectors in here. Okay, let me get a little bit more gooey. So the disc um, has this thing on the inside of it, which is the nucleus propulsus, which is our chocolate. And it's surrounded by goo and, and fluid. And when you have a bulging disc, that fluid can be pushed one way or the other instead of sitting kind of centrally and even Steven surrounding the whole space. Let me open up my chocolate here. Okay, pretend again, this is inside the marshmallow. Okay, so we've got this aged disc here. And your vertebrae, you're just doing your life, whatever. Things pound down. Just the gravity and pressure. Ooh, there, do you see that little bulge of marshmallow goo starting to come out right there? That might be a little bit of a stage one starting to happen. And then, oh, what if something happens and you get this really bad herniation now? So now maybe that's a stage two level of herniation. Um, and then maybe stage three, things are really starting to come out. Stage four would be that there's no more fluid left inside that disc. I've just shot the marshmallow to shreds and it's gooing all over the floor. Um, so that's kind of my, it's not even my, Example that was Ruthie Hardy's example from Ashiatsu, and I just illustrated it for you using s'mores. So, stage one of a herniation isn't so bad. Stage two, you start to see more goo coming out. Stage three, it's pretty well ruptured and leaking everywhere. Stage four, it's pretty dry and there's no more goo left. I don't know, that's my thing. So, there you go, and I think you should try a deluxe s'more like this. They're pretty tasty. There you go.